So they bolt the windows, they lock the door, they take away my watch. I don't even know what time it is. We haven't been here very long. Besides, it's easy to tell what time it is. Can't you hear my stomach growling? Well, it's definitely past lunchtime. I hope that Kip and Lewis are preparing us something to eat. I feel like they've just abandoned us. Well, don't look at me that way. They're not going to just leave us here to starve, are they? Uh, well, you two must be getting hungry. Well, you didn't think I'd gone off and forgot you, did you? Yeah, eat up. We don't care mm. about your food. We want to know when you're going to get us back to Landview. Honey. What kind of ransom do you want anyway? Honey, those questions are bad for your digestion. Mm? Take your... Megan, don't... No, you're right. I won't throw this. I've just figured out a very nice way for us to escape. You guys, huh? Yeah, I hey, Yeah, Gloria and I decided not to go shoot some pool. You okay? Yeah, yeah, come on in, come All on right. in. I was hoping you were gonna be that uh, agent that Porter was supposed to send over well, here. Well, sorry about that, but at least we didn't come empty-handed, huh? Not quite. What, nothing yet? No. Nope. Oh, me neither. I swear that phone hasn't rung one time. I don't know, Bo, this, I, this doesn't make any sense. They kidnap two women, they try not to contact us at all, there's no ransom that... What does this mean, unless... Uh, listen, why don't I heat up the pizza in the old microwave, huh? Lucky I'm not all that hungry. All right, Bo, so... you're gonna love it. Anchovies. You'll love it. Let's see where the kitchen is. Porter's guy. Gotta be. Pa. Get rid of that sad expression, Troy. son. Troy, tell him. Hey. I got news, Bo. Dear son, if only you would come to see me. Written down on paper, these words seem so cold. Each time I try to write down the truth, the truth that you're entitled to know, I lose my courage. Please, Max, come see me. I love you always, Mama. The truth that you're entitled to know. Now, what the hell happened between my father and Asa back on the Double Bar Ranch? Your daddy never told you. He never talked about the past. It was too painful. Now, was Asa the reason for that? Well, if your daddy let the past be the past, maybe that's the best. No, no, no. Not for me. Now, you started to tell me that Asa beat my daddy out of something. Well, that was the whiskey talking. Don't, uh, don't hide behind the booze. You're not leaving here until you tell me what Asa did to my father. You don't know me, Max. A couple of bourbons and branch water, and I start telling tall tales. Cut the bull. No, you were dead serious about my father and Asa. I was mad at Asa. So I told that story to make him look bad. A true story? What's the difference? Hey, we're talking about my father, your friend. Now, you told me the two of them were connected. Look, Max, for your own sake, forget it. I guarantee it that Asa has. No, I want the truth. Did Asa cheat my father? and then wait all these years to finish the job on me? Now, come on, damn it, man! You started with me, you can't break it off! I reckon you're right. If it hadn't been for Asa turning me down on that loan and all these drinks and all the tall tales, or what, why am I blaming everything else? I probably wanted to tell you. Probably wanted to unburden my heart and ease my conscience. Okay. Now, talk to me, please. Promise me one thing, Max, that you won't start throwing punches when I tell you how Asa Buchanan made his first million. 
don't jump the gun, son. Uh, Troy here has no new leads on Megan and Sarah. I'm sorry, Bo. Despite all our efforts, the kidnappers managed to slip through the roadblocks. Wait. You had people stationed at the bus depot, the airport, and nobody saw anything? Come on. No one answering Sarah or Megan's description when seen leaving town. It's like they stepped into that elevator at Landview Hospital and just vanished from the face of the earth. Well, that is really good news, Pa. Yeah. Thank you. Jake, hey, we don't even have to worry anymore. We don't have to sit and wait for the phone to ring. We don't have to go out searching anywhere because Megan and Sarah have just, how'd you put it, Troy? They've just fallen off the face of the earth and nobody can do a damn thing about it? No, 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 let's give them a chance. Now, you guys didn't come all the way out here just to tell us that, did you? You have got that right, Jake. Just because we don't know where Sarah and Megan are doesn't mean we can't force the kidnappers to release them. We don't even know who the kidnappers are, Pa. How can we force them to do a damn thing? Your turn, Troy. Remember Harding Richard's little black book, the one he had sent to police headquarters as insurance in case he met an untimely death? Which wasn't timely enough. Pa, oh, please, go ahead, Troy. Was there something in there to lead us to uh, Sarah and Megan? No, but it could provide the leverage we need to get that information. Wait, so I'm in the dark about this little black book still. Richards had some kind of journal, and in that it had information about his contacts with Johnny D? Even more than that, Jake. It leaves no doubt that Johnny D gave orders to assassinate Vicky. So what? We already know that. The DA's office can't hold Johnny D much longer on conspiracy charges, not as long as everyone refuses to testify. Everyone refuses to testify, Troy, because if we testify, Megan and Sarah are dead meat here. Let, let him finish, Jake. But don't you see, we can do an end run around the kidnappers. We don't need to rely on witnesses. With that little black book, we can go ahead with a hearing as planned. The judge will have to order Johnny D. tried for conspiracy to commit murder. You know, I, I don't even believe that I'm hearing this. You want to go ahead with a hearing, even though that could kill Megan and Sarah? Like I was trying to say two seconds ago, you push Johnny's hand and he's going to come through with his threats. No, no, wait a minute, boys. I am sure Troy thought this whole thing through. Uh, There's nothing to think about, Pa. If we go after Johnny D with that book, he's going to turn around, he's going to make one phone call, Megan and Sarah will be dead. Now, that's just great police work, Commissioner. Now, the surest way to get Megan and Sarah released is to force Johnny's hand, show him we cannot be bluffed. So, we just play Russian roulette with two innocent lives. Is that it, Troy? The man is already facing years in prison. Do you think he wants to add two murder raps to that? Well, if this guy turns out to have nothing to lose, yeah, he just might do that. We can't risk it, Troy. Come oh, on. I've got proof. Rock solid proof that can put Johnny D away. I can't withhold that from the judge. That's tantamount to concealing evidence. If you go on with this hearing, that's tantamount to committing murder. You can't do it, Troy. Bo's right. I think there's a way out of this. Yeah, yeah, there's only one way out of this. Troy backs off until we get Sarah and Megan back, Pa. But do you know what you're asking me to do? We're not asking you, Troy, so much as we're telling you. Hot stuff. Oh, I'm glad I got a large. Didn't know there was extra people. What's the problem? Nobody likes anchovies? I figured that we can get Sarah and Megan back home without any risk. I, I don't get it. First you tell me you don't want anything to eat, now you're concerned about atmosphere? No, this is not to eat by, okay? We're gonna torch the place. What? <sighs> what are you talking about, torch it? Sir, it's a very good way of getting out of here. Megan, look, the windows are barred, all right? The fireplace is blocked up. We don't even know where our landlords are. If you set fire to this place, we could be dead before anyone gets here. Look, we set the place on fire, then all this smoke starts happening. Those guys come rushing in this door, and we just go rushing out, and we escape. This place is a tinderbox. Once you start a fire, you can't control it. Minutes to the... All right, all right, all right. Besides, if the flames didn't get us the smoke... All right, all right, I said. Now, I'm sorry, but it just doesn't make any common sense at all. Oh, and it's common sense to just hang around and accept our fate, to just stay here and wait until we die? That's sensible? Not what I'm saying. Besides a chance that we could still be rescued. How? Nobody even knows that we're here. Are you forgetting about the tourists who wanted to take your pictures outside of the country store, huh? You got in the shot, right? So that's just another snapshot in somebody's photo album. That's all it is. Not if they recognize you as the star of Fraternity Row. Oh, I really think that that's grasping at no, straws. No, it's possible. 
Besides, even if they don't recognize you, these guys can't keep us in here forever. Oh. We'll go outside. Someone is going to see the face of America's favorite daytime star, Sarah, Megan Sarah, Gordon, Sarah, Sarah. and they're going to make a phone call. Sarah! We're deep in the farmlands of Pennsylvania. Amish country. There's no electricity here. They don't have telephones. They certainly don't have TVs. They don't even know what Fraternity Row is. They don't know me from Adam. If we're going to get out of here, we have to take it into our own hands. What, what are you doing? I'm doing what I should have done a long time ago. I am taking this into my own hands. I give you clean clothes, and this is how you treat me. Oh, well, excuse me. You are the nicest kidnapper we've ever had. Listen, just better? sit there and shut up, okay? Just shut up. I need to think. Well, I guess chocolate's on our pillows is out tonight. You know, that fruit basket is really passe. You think you're funny, don't you? Well, get this through your pretty little head. You just pulled your last stunt. You try anything like that again, and you're going to be begging to be treated like you are now. You know, I can be nice. I really can if people would just mind their manners. Oh, and if they don't, I suppose you resort to being exactly who you are. A goon hired by Johnny D. We know he's who hired you to kidnap us. He's made so much money off that drug money. He's not doing it for the ransom. Yeah, why is he doing it? To get out of jail. And how does he get out of jail? He beats the conspiracy rap. And he can't do that if there are people around to testify. So what does he do? He makes sure that there's nobody around to testify. So, brother, is that the gospel according to Kip? Yeah, you could be in a Bible. That is, if the Bible is a photo album full of mugshots. I take it back. You're not funny. You're smart. Too smart for your own good. So listen, take my advice. Stop asking questions and do as you're told. You'll live a lot longer. We're so smart. Why didn't you run when you had the chance? and leave you here with them? Oh, maybe he would have roughed me up a little bit, but at least you would have gotten to land, you could have gotten help. Not without you. <sighs> that was the second time. You missed your chance to leave. You may not get a third chance. We'll get a third chance, and we're leaving together. I am not leaving you here with Kip and Lewis. All right, if you're gonna be that way, you better hang tough, because no more Ms. Knight's guy. Paul, well, look, I know you've got good intentions, but there's just one word to describe this plan of yours. Inspired, right? No, insane. My own flesh and blood dare talk to me like that? Sorry, Asa, but I have to go along with him on this one. So do I. You know, you fact, all underestimate too, my power of personal diplomacy. Now, when I walk in that prison and I sit down face to face with Carlo Hesse, I will have this problem solved in no time. Asa, no, please, Troy, let me finish. My wife, Renee, went to visit Carlo. He convinced her had nothing to do with the kidnapping, but I know better. You actually expect him to admit his guilt? No, I don't expect him to admit anything, but I'm going to point out to him that my family played by his rules. We pulled out of the hearing. We refused to testify. As a result, he will let Megan and Sarah come home. You're going to laugh in your face, Pa. He laughs in my face, and I'll smash his face like a ripe banana. Uh, smashing Carlo's face is not going to solve the problem. Neither will appealing to his sense of honor. So then, we're back to your plan, Troy. Which will get the girls killed in no time. If I may dive in here... No, no, no. no. Just like you up. just... All right, no problem. No problem. We have to follow the law. The law. You follow the law, Troy, because as far as I'm concerned, the law has done diddly. Where's all this help that the feds promised us? Now, if Jake and I want to get Sarah and Megan back, we're going to have to do it our way. That's right. Whoa, wait, wait. Let it ring three times so the guys in the truck can stop the tracing. Bo Buchanan. Sal is such a darling. He's up there asleep all cold around his teddy bear. <laughs> Gabrielle, what are you doing with those letters? I, I'm almost finished. Max gave you explicit instructions to burn them. Yes, I know he did, but... Well, this one was half open, and... Well, once I read what was inside, I had to keep going. I couldn't burn them. It's not your decision to make. They belong to Max. 
But, no, 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 no. What is his is mine and vice versa. <laughs> what a convenient way to look at it. Oh, here, listen. Hear me out. Even after the first letter, Max's mother kept hinting at something that was a terrible danger to her, something that changed her life. No, you told me she ran off with some other man. She wrote those letters to explain the situation to Max. If he prefers not to read them, that's no, not but it's, our it's business. much more than another man. Mom, I have seen the Holden's Ranch. It is a run-down, ramshackle place. It's, it's something that would break anyone's spirit. But apparently it never broke Max's mother's spirit. She loved that old ranch. And she also loved Max and Steve very much. Obviously not enough. Or she wouldn't have abandoned them. I'm telling you, something drove her away. I am certain of it. But we're never going to find out, are we? Because we're going to bundle up those letters and set fire to them. I can't. I can't do that. Well, I can. No, Mum, please. Just bear with me, all right? I have got to find out what happened to the Holdens, and it'll tell me in here. And once I do find out, I swear to you, I'll burn every single letter, and Max will never be the wiser. Gabrielle, we need to talk. Ah, uh, Julia. I'm sorry, I, I didn't realize you were here. Oh, darling. Mm. Mum just brought Al back from the beach. He's now fast asleep. Yeah, well, I envy him. Hi. Hi. It uh, doesn't take a genius to see that you're upset. Is this a sort of husband-wife conversation? Yeah, if you don't mind. I don't, no. Some things are better settled one-on-one. -on -one. Be good to each other, all right? What you have is very precious. Try to remember that. Now, what the hell does she mean by that? <laughs> you know, Mum, she always wants everything to be perfect. And I'm the same way when I see you upset. What's wrong? Did you burn my mother's letters? Well, did you? Um, Max, uh, yes, that's, that's what you instructed me to do. <coughs> Dad! No, no, you told me you wanted them burned, I thought. No, no, no. You're right, I'm sorry. It's just that I thought maybe there was something in there that could prove. I just wonder if Chuck's story was true. Chuck? Yeah, Chuck Wilson. Oh, yeah, he used to be uh, Ace's assistant at one time. Oh, so that's what this is all about. I thought for a minute... You thought for a minute what? Things have been a little tense between us. I, I thought that I'd done something else to anger No, 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 everything's fine. I mean... <laughs> Chuck talked about Asa the whole time. I can't wait till I get a hold of that old goat and squeeze the truth right out of him. Yeah? Well, I'll believe it when I see it. Who the hell was that? That was Fred, uh, Federal Anti-Crime Bureaucrat Porter. Porter's a good man. Porter's a porter. He come up with anything? Yeah, yeah, he sure did. He came up with this... an agent. Alex Olenov. Who's that? A refugee from the KGB? Lucky, I tell you, your guess is as good as mine. I mean, he says that this uh, Olenov guy has got to be the best. Well, he better be, because this is all we're gonna get. One? One agent? That's it? That's Just... all we're gonna get, Jake. And we don't even know when this guy is gonna show up. So much for where your tax dollars go. Isn't that right, Pa? Troy, get on the phone. Uh, Asa, I'm only the local police commissioner. I'm not responsible for the federal agency. Fine, fine. I learned a long time ago. When push comes to shove, the Buchanans have to do the pushing and shoving. Hey, sir, if you're trying to tell me I'm excluded, I hope it won't have to stay that way. Whether you believe it or not, I'm still a friend, and I'll do anything to help. I'll even arrange that meeting between you and Carlo. But first, I just want to work on Johnny. When he's confronted with that evidence in Harding's book, he'll realize what he's up against and call off the kidnapping. Don't count on it. He's not the kind of guy who gives up without a fight, Troy. He's also an intelligent man. When he sees we have him dead to rights, he may decide to bargain. All right, Troy. We'll give you some time, give you a few hours. But if Johnny D is not impressed with that black book, we're going to go another way. We're going to go the Buchanan way. Now, come on, I'll give you a ride down to City Hall. All right, Asa. Oh, Jake. Believe me, guys, I, I really am on your side. Yeah, sure. You thinking what I'm thinking? I'm way ahead of you. Let's go. Where were you guys going? To the waterfront. It's our best bet. All right, hey, listen. 
Uh, I'll stay here just in case the kidnappers call, okay? Megan, Megan, it's locked. Okay, I'm just gonna find some other way out of here. Fireplace, maybe the fireplace. Locked, Megan. Well, loosen the boards. And then what, fly? Look, I didn't say this was gonna be easy, okay? Maybe we can climb up the chimney. That is a possibility. You are not gonna be able to loosen those boards without any tools. Megan, it's not gonna work. Look, I'm not gonna stay here. I'm going back to Landview. Jake and I have been through too much for us to be separated by death. Look, don't you think I know how you feel? Think I like being separated from Bo and cooped up here in this godforsaken place? You know, to make things worse, I look really bad in purple. At least you're wearing blue. Yeah, I have to admit, I mean, if I'm gonna be kidnapped with yeah, anybody... Yeah, I know. I'd like to be kidnapped with you, too. This is a godforsaken place. I don't know. Maybe I was wrong about that. What's that? Somebody's vibing. What's good and big? We could hit Kip over the head with it when he walked in. Megan. Well, I'm sorry. I've been on so many promotional tours for Fraternity Row. We spent a lot of time in hotel rooms with a lot of Bibles in the drawers. And trust me, I've read that thing cover to cover. Yeah, well, then you must remember Isaiah 11, 6. And the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. Oh, that makes me feel a lot better. So we're these little lambs wandering around waiting for the wolves to sharpen their teeth and gobble us up? No, I think you're missing the point of the passage. It's talking about a brighter and a better day. Let us eat and drink for... Yeah? Go on. Never mind. We started it. You might as well finish it. Let us eat and drink. For tomorrow we shall die. Help you. Name's Green. Commissioner of Special Task Force. So you say. Transfer evidence number 1739 to Detective Green. It also says as soon as possible. You got a sign. Thanks. Been a big help. A real big help. Dr. Norris? Who wants to know? Oh, uh, Mr. Commissioner, sir. I, I didn't realize. That is, uh, we don't get visits from the top brass down here. Relax, Sergeant. I'm here to make sure nothing happens to the evidence I'm collecting in Carlo Hesser, Johnny D. case. Oh, no, sir. Our security is there tight. I'm sure it is. But given the importance of the case, I'd feel better about taking personal charge of certain items. Oh, of course, sir. Uh, let's see. That'll be evidence number uh, 1739. That something wrong, Sergeant? Oh, no, sir. Uh, but you may have to wait on this particular item. It was just requisitioned a minute ago. Requisitioned? You mean someone took it? Yes, sir. Detective Green from your special task force. My special? There is no Detective Green on the task force. But that's impossible. He showed me his badge. He, he signed the release. I... I don't care if he signed a declaration of independence. This form is a fake. De Detective Green is a fake. And you let him walk out of here with vital evidence. I'm sorry, sir. I followed the rules. It's procedure number Y27 in the manual, sir. You can, you can check it yourself. Max, we learned the hard way that Asa never backs down from a fight. Neither do I. Yes, but you fight fairly. He doesn't. Max, 
Uh, we were both disappointed that you didn't get the commission for the hotel, but we really don't need that money. And I don't think that we should give Asa the satisfaction of knowing that he's upset us. I'm not talking about it, that he shafted me out of the commission. I'm talking about what he did to my father. Your father? What do you think? I've been sitting at this hotel talking to this Wilson and listening to what he had to tell me about my father. You know, he worked for Asa. And he knows what that old buzzard did to my poor father. You know, years ago, Asa stole a family legacy, a birthright. It should have been passed on to me and my brother, and now to our son. All right, all right, please, calm down. Just start from the beginning, all right? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Here, remember, remember that whole old homestead back in Texas? Yes, yes, I do, but what has that got to do with this? Well, 30 years ago, according to Wilson, my father made a new friend in a rancher that made it his business to buy property among other things. A real go-getter. And guess what his name was? Asa Jeb Stewart Buchanan. Is he your father? Yeah, would you believe that? <laughs> and to top it, they became great pals. Sat on the porch and sipped iced tea and ate my mother's blueberry pie and talked about many things but especially mineral rights. You know what they are? Yeah, uh, very important in the West. It, it, a piece of land can look useless, but underneath there could be a vast reservoir of natural gases or water. Or, or oil. Remember, that was always Ace's passion. That was the foundation of his empire. And all the while, he was rocking on my daddy's porch. He kept harping on a... Oh, what a wonderful opportunity it would be for the Holden family to sell their mineral rights to him. Asa always had a silver tongue, so it was real easy to convince my daddy. And I'm sure it was real easy to forget to mention that he already knew that my daddy was sitting on a huge amount of oil. He already knew before he even made the offer? Does a fox know the chickens live in a chicken coop? Your father didn't sell him the rights, did he? What do you think? Daddy was a kind and a simple man. So he sold the rights for a few hundred bucks. And Asa didn't waste any time. Within a month, he had his drilling crew in there and struck a major dome of Texas crude. It was raining oil. And Daddy never saw a penny of it. How could Asa do this? <laughs> what am I saying? It's vintage Asa, isn't it? He probably made millions. Tens of millions. Tens. <sighs> and you know what the worst part of it was? Only a short years later, he bled the land dry. So he left it more barren and worthless than he found it before. Thanks, your father must have been heartbroken. His spirit was broken. Well, he tried to rebuild something for his family. And finally, his heart gave out. Asa sent flowers to the funeral, you know that? Anonymously. Because he didn't want to offend anybody. Wasn't that a kind gesture? Asa Buchanan has always been kind to the Holdens, hasn't he? Oh my God, are you okay? Yes, what was that? I told you no more tricks. I told you we should tie him up, that way he wouldn't try to escape. Oh, boys, we weren't trying to escape. Yeah, I suppose that window broke all by itself, huh? I don't know. We were just sitting here quietly reading the Bible, and all of a sudden the glass just shattered. That's right. See for yourself. Maybe she's telling the truth. Maybe maybe somebody's come here to find him. There's only one way to tell for sure. Come on. Oh, and ladies, don't even think about trying to escape. Maybe it's the police, or Bo, or Jane. Well, well, I see Kip and Lewis looking around. 
Yeah, and, and? And I see a big barn. And that's about it. No police, no bow, no change. Yeah. What are you laughing about? What do you think is so oh, well, I think I just solved the mystery of our uh, broken window. I don't know what to say. I mean, I knew Asa was ruthless, but I never would have imagined how he made his first million by ruining your father. I'm not sure it sounds like the Asa we know, doesn't it? Or maybe that's the point, maybe sure. It sounds like too much like the Asa we know. What do you mean? Well, Chuck, sorry. That's maybe just it. The story. I mean, maybe it's designed to manipulate me, to, to react with my, my heart, my feelings, instead of my head. Are you saying that Chuck's story is not true? I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, maybe Asa's trying to manipulate me, set me up one more time. Yes, but darling, why? What, what would be his point? What would he gain? Who knows? I, I, I understand that, that, that it's possible for your scenario to take place, but it's also very possible that, that Chuck's story is true. Hey, I'm willing to believe anything right now. But the trouble is, I can't go ask Asa, can I? Why not, if he's the only one who has the answers? Well, that's another thing Chuck told me. <laughs> that Asa probably forgot the raw deal that he pulled on my father. Well, that doesn't surprise me. If you think of all the raw deals that Ace has pulled in his life, it probably is very hard for him to keep track. Yeah. But well, somehow I've got to find a way to check out Chuck's story to see if it's true without alerting Asa. Max, look, I realize that you're very skeptical of Chuck, and I don't blame you, considering that he worked with Asa very closely for a few years. But I don't understand why they'd be trying to set you up. We haven't done anything. Yeah. Well, everyone has his Achilles heel. Even Asa. And his Achilles heel is his pride. I don't know, maybe... Maybe I unnerved him by my attempts to top him in this town. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe he's trying to manipulate me. Trying to make me act impulsively or, or even recklessly. Or maybe... <laughs> who knows? Maybe he wants me to try to punch him in his jaw no, no, so no, he can no, throw no. me into jail for no. battery and assault. I mean, that is far too bizarre, even for Asa. Hey! Nothing's too bizarre for that old creep. Well, you're, you're right about that, but... I, I, I don't think you're being set up. I, I really think that there, there is some truth in Chuck's story. I mean, especially when I... Yeah, especially that you were what? Asa, I've been all over town looking for you. Oh, uh, in a minute. Plant yourself at the bottom of the tour here. I'll join you. No, no, I need to speak with you right now. Excuse me, please. Hey, hey, hey. This is a cotton picket. No, I, I'm hey. sure your business is very important here, except this is a matter of life and death, Asa. Asa, you gonna let him to get away with this? Are you talking about the girl? I'm talking about the girls, please. Like the man said, it's life and death. I'll call you later, Forrest. <sighs> this had better be as important as you think it is. It is. Try this on for size, Asa. I just spoke to Troy Nichols. You know that little black book we were going to use to indict Johnny D with? It's been stolen. What? You heard me. Somehow, somebody walked right into the Landview Police Department and stole right out from underneath the noses. That's why I say to hell with these cops. These guys want to fight with bare knuckles. I am ready. You're ready for what? Well, like you said, Asa, push comes to shove, you do your own shoving. So if you back us with the firepower, Bo, Lucky and myself, who are willing to go get Megan and Sarah wherever they are and bring them back home. You realize what you're suggesting? I realize exactly what I'm suggesting here, Asa. A full-on war. If this is the way they want to play, they want to fight eye for an eye, we'll give them eye for an eye. Now, where did this ball come from if there's nobody around to throw it through the window? All right, back off so I can clean your mess up. Oh, it's a good help is hard to find. Why well, all you want? We haven't found the one who broke this yet, but we will. And it's one of your heroes. He's gonna wish he'd stayed home in Landview. Well, you're wasting your time looking for somebody because I lied. What? No, you don't. Oh, I might as well tell him I lied. I, I broke the window. You? Miss Gordon, I warned you. Yeah, I know, I know. It wasn't a trick. It, I, it happened by accident. Sarah and I started getting into an argument. I mean, you know how it is. We're 
stuck in here all by ourselves. I mean, isn't that right? Well, right. I, you see, she's very religious, and I am not. She wanted me to read the Bible. I grabbed it out of her hand. It flew out of mine, hit the window, and broke it. You broke the window with the Bible? Yes. You see, I knew you weren't going to believe this. I knew you were going to think that we were trying to escape, and then you were going to try and punish us. It was an accident, I promise. It's a crazy enough story. It might be true. Well, I swear it is. It is. Okay. Okay, I'll clean this up. So listen. No more accidents. The next one might not be so pleasant. Why did you do that? Sarah! Why did you him? Where there is a ball, there is a boy. Intuition, if you want. I, I just have a feeling that the story that Chuck is telling, it, it could be true. Yeah, yeah. Woman's intuition, huh? I, I have a feeling you know something, so talk to me. No, darling, I, I think... How, how could I possibly know what went on with Asa and your father 30 years ago? I don't know, I don't know, but I feel you know something. Oh, sweetheart, I really do think that you've misunderstood here. I didn't claim to have any knowledge about Asa's dealings with your father's ranch, but, but I do know Asa, and I think that Chuck's story could be very plausible. I wish I could be so sure. You know, I feel really set up. Max, I don't think you're being set up. Asa just won the first round. You'll win the next. <laughs> I'm glad I have you in my corner. Oh. I am in your corner. And on top of being your wife, I'm your number one fan. Don't you ever forget that. Listen to me. Asa is a relic of the old days. You know, his... His heavy-handed power, it's way out of style. He just doesn't know it yet, but you're going to teach him. There's only one way to deliver that lesson. Power meeting power. Now, Dad couldn't do it, but by God, I will. You know, I've never seen you like this. I've never seen you so full of rage and determination. Well, up till now, I was just toying with him. Because I needed survival money for you and Al. But that's changed now. If Chuck's story is true, if the Buchanan Empire was built on the backs of the Holdens, I swear to you, God help me, I will destroy that old man. Just as he destroyed my family. Be goosebumps when I hear you talk this way. It's, it's terrifying and thrilling at the same time. I am with you. No matter where this takes you, no matter what you have to do, I am behind you 100%. Hey, Lucky. Messages? to go. No message from the kidnappers, but the cops outside reported somebody saw a prowler in the neighborhood. Huh. Be careful, Lucky. P.S. I left a slice of pizza in the fridge. Get off of me. All right, Porter sent me. But, oh, God, don't tell me. Special Agent Alex Olenoff. I'm in charge of the Sarah Buchanan, Megan Gordon kidnapping case. Well, that was a logical theory, Megan, but I don't see any little boy. Oh, really? Then what do you call that over there? Huh? Hey. hey no, 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 wait, wait. Please don't run away. Please. Really? Wait, please. wait. We're not going to blame you for the window. We don't care. We just want to talk to you. Just come here. Come a little closer. Hi. My name's Sarah. This is my sister, Megan. Hi. What's your name? Benjamin. Oh, that's a nice name. It's a Bible name, isn't it? 
the son of Jacob and Rachel. His descendants were the warriors and defenders of Israel. Oh, very proud tradition. You, you must study an awful lot, huh? Not as much as I'm supposed to. If father finds out, I snuck away to play oh, and no, broke no, the don't window. Worry. Don't worry, we won't tell him, will we, Sarah? No, no, of course not, we won't. Listen, Benjamin, it's, it's hard to explain, but we've been brought here against... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, here comes our jailer. Jailer? Benjamin, would you let me borrow your bat, please? But please, please, just do what she says. I promise you, we won't blame you for the window. We just, we need your back. Please, please. Well, please. Great, thank you. Just go and hide. Go and hide. Okay, where's your sister? Oh. Sunday, the unforgettable first, life goes on. Then, don't be a stick in the mud. Right after America's Funniest Home Videos, it's Tim Conway's Funny America. Everyone's laughing at the summer Sunday funnies. Passion erupts for Colton and Carla. Stay tuned for General Hospital, following an ABC News Brief, next.